Um, hi everyone, good evening. Um, it's morning in the UK for us, um, but I take it it's 9 p.m. Um, in Baltimore. Um, so thanks for taking the time to join us on this webinar. Um, we're really, really excited to introduce our new head coach of the Olympic Root Academy. Um, so we'll do some quick introductions first. We'll go around the team that we've got on the call. Um, I'll then do a bit of an overview and a bit of a reminder about the Root Academy and what we're trying to do um, with our academy and um, working with Chandra. And then we'll hand over to the new coach um, who'll do a bit of a Q&A as well. So my name's Chloe. Um, I oversee the marketing department at the Root Academy, but I've also been heavily involved in our work in the US and how we're expanding what we do in the US and working very closely with Chandra. Um, so that's been my key role um, over the past um, year or so. Um, and we're just looking forward to developing our approach in the US and just expanding across there and what we can do and deliver there. So I'll hand over to Dan, who's on the call. Yes, hi everyone. Just uh, retail closer. Thank you very much for giving up your time. We appreciate it a lot. Um, so I am a marketing executive with the Roots Academy. So I work uh, with Chloe on the marketing side of, of the company. Um, much like Chloe said, really, just really, really excited for this for this project and, and the new full-time academy out in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, it's a big project and, and one we're all, all really looking forward to getting stuck in with. So um, it'll be great for you guys to to meet the head coach and, and find out a bit more about the program. So yeah, just again, thank you for your time. It, it's it's appreciated. Cool. And we'll just um, introduce Chandra. I'm sure you all know Chandra. Um, Chandra, if you just want to give a brief introduction again. All right, thank you everyone for joining. And um, my name is Chandra Sabawatku. I'm the Managing Director of Olymp Olympic Indoor Sports, which is a state of art facility that is coming up and it, we get started next week, um, hopefully, uh, once uh, we get the final permit. But, uh, you know, the concept of, uh, you know, building this infrastructure where we can, you know, develop most of the successful athletes and, uh, you know, all the three um, baseball, softball and uh, cricket sports that I focused on developing the, these sports. And uh, this is a 20,000 square feet, um, uh, facility with a uh, lot of uh, technology integrated in, uh, in terms of the tracks machines integrated with Bola UK machines and uh, Fungoman for pitching and a um, lot of uh, technologies in, in sense of uh, uh, stalker speed guns for the uh, pace bowling speed check and uh, um, we do have uh, uh, this uh, cameras integrated with the uh, you know, live feed and delayed feed so that, you know, uh, the coaches can um, work with the player and the teams and they can take the clippings and take it over to their home from, you know, our um, server where we can uh, help them to get uh, the clipping with the USB. And uh, uh, other thing, important thing is um, the synthetic beach pitch. Um, which uh, we got it um, from Gaba, Australia, which is very close to the test cricket surface, which gives a consistent uh, bounce, not like, you know, uh, having a 5 mm um, uh, padding turf pitch. It gives uh, uneven bounce and sometimes, you know, it is like little scary for the ki little kids, you know, it bounces a lot. So that's where I put a lot of um, uh, effort on that, uh, you know, bringing the best and we have eight cricket lanes, uh, including two machine lanes. So six um, lanes are long lanes uh, where I don't think any of the facilities have um, this kind of uh, infrastructure. And it is uh, close to 140 feet or four lanes and uh, 110 feet is another two lanes. But other than that, you know, we have the best of the best um, uh, coaches that uh, we are uh, planning to launch from Root Academy. And this is an amazing partnership that we wanted to um, uh, continue with um, uh, Root Academy and uh, bring the uh, international coaches across um, UK and Australia uh, to US. 
Uh, that's it uh, from my side. Um, and uh, yeah, Chloe, you can give a little brief about our head coach. No problem. Thanks, Chandra. Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'd like to um, reveal who our new head coach will be for the Olympic Root Academy. So Riaz, do you want to give a bit of an introduction for yourself? Hi everyone, um, I'm Riaz, I'm South African and also <laughs> British by uh, who marriage, thankfully. Um, uh, I, uh, I've coached in South Africa, the UK. Uh, I had a brief stint as the head coach of Morocco. Um, and currently live in Dubai and, and doing some private coaching there as well. Uh, I'm at the World Cup in India working with the Netherlands. This is my 12th ICC tournament. Uh, I've worked with India the last few years in the UK. I've done both uh, Test Championship finals with them and the 2019 World Cup and the T20 World Cup in, in the UAE. So uh, quite experienced in, in sort of international cricket management side, perhaps not so much the playing side, but I have um, a lot of the teams I have involved me in their coaching and things. I'm helping the Netherlands at the moment with uh, fielding drills and things like that. So 20 year, 20, over 20 years experience in coaching. Um, Coach Joe and Billy Root at Sheffield Collegiate. I was there for 10 years um, before moving south. So um, across the levels, I've coached from school level and club level uh, all the way up to international level. So um, and I like to share that experience with everyone that I coach, really. Um, and very passionate cricket fan, probably more of a traditionalist in, in that I'm more of a test fan than a T20 fan. But uh, I see where the game's going and I'm certainly not going to swim against the tide. Um, yeah, and then just, just very passionate about the sport and growing the sport um, and developing players and, and making sure that, you know, that the, that the game that we all love um, continues to grow and to prosper. That's great. Thanks, Riaz. Um, and we're delighted to have Riaz on board um, and to announce Riaz as the new head coach for the Olympic Root Academy. Um, so we'll come back to Riaz later on in the webinar. I just want to give um, a little bit of a reminder as to the Root Academy and how we operate as a business and also how the we see the academy working with Chandra at Olympic Indoor Sports. Um, so the Root Academy is was founded about five years ago with Billy, um, Billy Root, Joe Root and Matt Root. So it's very much been a family business and the business operates as a way of giving back to cricket. So we primarily provide um, cricket opportunities around the world to any players of any abilities. Um, and we just want to help to grow the game across the world. And how we do that, we operate in three different functions. So the first is being our pathway, and that involves coaches being directly in front of players. And um, the pathway is kind of shaped like a pyramid. So we start off at being softball cricket um, at the bottom, and then we gradually move up to what is our high performance programme. So we very much see the Olympic Roots Academy as being towards the top of that pyramid in that high performance bracket, which I'll come on to in a little bit more detail later on. Um, we then... Um, look at the product side of things so because we've got a network of coaches and players we want to be able to provide um, innovative products that players can set up really easily and use in their training sessions or in their coaching sessions so that's kind of the second brand to the business the third arm is then our which is something that we've been working hard on over the past um, year or so is our coach education so we've got a network of coaches like Riaz um, who operate around the world there's a lot of experience, there's a lot of knowledge there, and we want to help to share that to other coaches to just to upskill and improve the experiences um, of coaches around the world, which will in turn grow the game as well. So that's kind of a brief overview as to the Root Academy and, and how we operate as a business. And then with the Olympic Root Academy, so we've been working very closely with Chandra over the past um, couple of years, We've been operating in the US where we've kind of done a lot of coaching camps, but it's always been an ambition of ours to have something more permanent there in the US. And with Chandra, um, we've developed, a, we've um, gone into a partnership with Chandra and Olympic Indoor Sports, where the Root Academy will be based full time at Olympic Indoor Sports. So we'll be using um, Chandra's state of the art facilities. So all of the training sessions will be run in Chandra's facility. 
and then Riaz will come in and um, so he'll be our permanent head coach who will be based in the US and he will deliver the programme. And the programme is being developed by both Riaz and our high performance director, Sean Seeger. So we've got a lot of knowledge um, and experience that goes into that. And it's all based upon our high performance programme um, that's set out in Adelaide. So that's kind of a brief overview as to how we see the academy um, running and how it will, will operate. Um, Chandra, feel free to add in any other points that I've missed. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Clay, uh, for um, explaining the you know the structure. So basically, you know, um, a lot of parents will have the questions: Do you form the teams? Do you uh, have your own teams as an academy? Yes, we do have our own teams. Um, uh, that's where you know we are focusing on developing the kids and you know forming the teams like U11, 13, 15, 17. Uh, so on and um, other than that uh, what will be our development program you know yes uh, Sean Sigurd and Riaz Richards will work together and come up with a development program plan how the feedback system will be there and how uh, they wanted to conduct the uh, you know practice sessions or uh, all the schedules and as well as you know my idea is that a coach should come to the game and observe the games and understand what is uh, missing, what is lacking in the kids, or what approach we are missing. So then only we can, you know, focus on working on the kid or or as a team. So that's a kind of a philosophy that we wanted to bring. Unless until we see what is happening, we cannot work because you know you go and give the exam, but you fail the exam and you don't know why you fail the exam, right? Exactly. So. We don't know what we need to work on the, uh, you know, the practice and all. So, uh, one thing when I had a conversation with Riaz, he mentioned that, uh, you know, when we are not developing a kid and uh, when we are not uh, helping the kid to play the cricket, no matter in our academy or anywhere, then we are failing ourselves. You know, we are actually literally. So, that I liked it because you know most of the academies due to some competition or anything, they feel like, you know, the kid should not play certain leagues or uh, certain tournaments. And which is like, you know, uh, it it is not good for the health of the cricket. And also, you know, as a player or a kid, they want to play all the tournaments. That's what I want to focus because I come from a parent background now. So I understand the pain areas of the parents. So I wanted to um you know focus on those areas where we can make a, a revolutionary changes in our uh, olympic route academy so that you know we create that system ecosystem where we give a lot of freedom for the parents or the kids to take, take their decisions whatever good for the kids yeah that's a great explanation chandra as to how we see it running um thanks for that um I suppose we can open this up now. So if there's any questions that anyone has about um, the program or to Riaz, um, we'll happily take those. Do you organize uh, high performance camps and do you give a high performance camp to be organized, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll still be looking to do high performance camps as well. And depending on the skill of the candidate, whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. We'll still be looking to do those as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we will be doing uh, intense um, uh, series of the programs like batting skills or spin bowling or base bowling or fielding skills or catching skills, kind of different camps and clinics, definitely. And we will do a lot of one on ones um, to, you know, focus on uh, certain skills of the kid if they are focused really interested in bowling or batting or something um, we we are open to train anybody there's nothing like we train only on our academy players but we are open to you know whatever we can serve to the community thank you thank you Abdul, you should have some questions. Mm -hmm. 
at the moment the only question i have chandra is i was just wondering with uh, with my boys you know uh, like wicket keeping is that something that is part of the training uh, wicket keeping coaching yes yeah. yeah i'll let um, riaz under that yeah, I think um, we'll cover all the skills, not just the, the basic skills of batting, bowling, fielding and keeping, but the mental skills, uh, game plans. Um, so it'll, it'll encompass all of cricket and focusing on 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 all the formats as well. I, I don't think I think if you if you look at the way Joe Root plays now with the ramps and everything um, and you think, wow, that's amazing. I can tell you that he didn't play any of those fancy shots when he was growing up. He built his skill on on sort of um, sort of simple batting. He, he was in the nets and never, ever wanted to get out. Um, that was his main ambition. And then he added that the extra fancy stuff onto his strong basics. And that's why he's one of the best cricketers in the world. Um, and that's generally my coaching philosophy of Let's instill the basics. Let's do the basics really, really well. And from there, you can expand your game. Um, so, yeah, we'll cover keeping, batting, bowling, and we'll, and it will be, you know, it'll be all encompassing. And, and it's player led as well at a certain stage. Once you get to a certain age, um, the player decides what's important for them, what they'd like to do. Um, because I'm not a very prescriptive coach where you have to do it my way or there's a set way of doing things. There's a million different ways to bowl and be successful and to bat and be successful. Um, so it will be very individualized and very, very much player led um, within sort of the structure that we set up. Um, because at the end of the day, the player's in charge of, of where they want to go and their career and what they make of it. And we just facilitate that as best we can. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Chandra, one question, Chandra. So <clears throat> I, I understand the coaching part. You, you did mention that you're going to have your own team, uh, like your under 11 to under 17. I, I get that part. So that was one of the, my questions, so which you answered. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the actual games and actual practice, actual games, right? Like, uh, uh, as you know, that we have two seasons uh, here in uh, Washington DC metro area. The one is WICL, the other one is, I think, MICA. Besides that, there will be during during long weekends, so there will be a, a shorter version of uh, uh, games that happen. Uh, so, uh, you will be participating uh, in those tournaments as well, right? Yes, yeah, definitely. We also conduct our own tournament, uh, USYPL, right? So, wherein, you know, we play all the tournaments, VPL, USYPL, CYCC, whatnot, MLC also. So, we have a strong connection with MLC. So, we want to um, field our own team in MLC Junior. And uh, uh, okay. definitely, you know, there are some interest from the Richmond uh, uh, and some interest from Virginia, some interest from Delaware also. People want to travel here and uh, get trained here. So that's the reason, you know, I want to build teams over this six months period and emphasize more on the basics, fundamentals of the, you know, the skills. Then, you know, it will explore, you know, then, you know, we will have more coaches depending on the volume of the kids that we have. So as if now, Riaz Richards is the head coach and we are bringing another assistant coach from uh, India. And uh, we all already have uh, Russell, uh, who played for USA Cricket as uh, another coach. Okay, okay. And uh, um, I do see, like, uh, you, you know, right? So my son uh, goes to this uh, uh, WCA Academy. Uh, they okay. do visit uh, to London during the summertime, during like August time frame. I think they per this is the, I mean, uh, because of my personal reasons, I couldn't send my son. Uh, they participated uh, as a team they participated in uh, some of the games i don't know in details because the fact that uh, we never been i never i never sent my son to that uh, to that level i mean to 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 london basically so i think uh, they have some kind of uh, they they had like i think they visited joe root academy in london as well during this uh, summer time as well and also they play some leagues over there uh, over the course of a week or eight day period actually 
so is that something that uh, uh, we will be doing as well uh, during the summer time yeah definitely in fact i introduced uh, raj to the root academy yeah, yeah you told me when we had one on one conversation yeah correct correct so we since root academy is already there we we planned we designed actually a package this year itself but due to conflicts with us ypl and other leagues i couldn't manage it so i said uh, maybe we will defer it to next year we will definitely plan for one tour at least to uk to have an experience there at least a 10 day trip where you know we can play kids can play like at least two five six games and with the local teams and also have a visit to uh, any of the games or any of the big games in lords or edge best and anywhere that is closer to you know our academy there yeah okay got it yeah thank you chandra rahul welcome all right any other questions so hari yeah, actually hari actually he stayed in sydney i think and he is also one of the cricketing coach level 2 right hari sorry i was actually having difficulty unmuting uh yes yes i am i'm a level 2 level yeah, i just had a chance to while i was in uh, australia right. for a for a while just had a uh, had a chance to uh, get involved with uh, new south wales cricket and queensland cricket awesome. any other points or chandra, chandra did you get any um questions from people outside the meeting for for riaz did anyone send anything to you to to ask no i mean there were some basic questions that i got like you know what is uh, the coaching philosophy of the head coach and that is a basic question i got uh, if you can emphasize riaz uh, you can give some response to that question yeah so i basically work on a 3e principle which is enjoy encourage um and and then um and also what we're trying to do is an excel sorry um so enjoy the game uh, teach the kids at a young age to enjoy the game because if you instill that love of the game for them they'll never lose it um you know whether they continue playing or watching in some format they'll be engaged in the game and then encourage so at a, when they get a little bit older encourage them to try to be the best they can be um you know a lot of kids because of competition in different sports and are quite sure just how good they they are in certain sports and sometimes they're a bit shy to tell you their ambitions um and, and so it's up to us as the coaches to encourage them to try to be the best they can be uh and then excel uh, those guys who those guys and girls who really want to reach the top um you push them um and 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 show them the sort of the route to success um and and how how they can get there and what they need to do and and that covers not just the skills but things like nutrition and understanding the game and learning more about the game so that that's my philosophy that we we start with you know getting people to enjoy the game first because um as i tell lots of people it cricket is is a difficult sell to lots of people because of the length of the game and the fact that you can be out first ball and you know, if you're not a bowler then it's it's really difficult so you know i try to encourage people to then enjoy fielding and get joy from fielding because they can contribute you know to wickets that way by getting a run out or a great catch and things like that so yeah it's very important i'm i'm massive massive cricket fan and always have been and i think that it's up to everyone involved in the game to encourage people to you know to play it and enjoy it and watch it um because you know it, it's, it's like i said it's very exciting time for cricket the world cups on at the moment um and it's in india which for me is is really the home of cricket at the moment you know it's taken over from the uk if we're honest this is this is where everything happens um and then the fact that it's just been announced in the olympics is is massive for the sport um and so we can really make a huge difference now um all of us um and you know playing your small part in in, in growing the game and getting people to understand the game and watch it so yeah i'm 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 very excited about where cricket could be headed especially with the olympic announcement as well 
Amazing, great. And you mentioned um, you were part of the dual ICC events, right? Including uh, India team, you England, and some Test level championship. Um, and uh, so, what is your observation? And uh, how a kid of eleven year, twelve year can actually prepare themselves to be a professional player? You know, Chandra, a lot of it is is very basic things. Um, you see, you see, I see a lot of coaches and a lot of training that that looks way too involved. And then I've worked with these teams. I worked with India for the last four years, and the training is very basic. There is very simple drills. It's just repetitive. It's groove, you know, grooving your batting, getting your bowling discipline. There's not a lot of of fancy things, what I would call fancy things. It's very, very simple. The coaches keep it simple because the players, it's just knowing. You know that muscle memory of batting being able to repeat something over and over and then after that it's just game plans really so um getting to the top it seems really hard when you when you're young and when you're a parent and you want the best for your kid and actually the path there is it's quite easy enough in a way um as long you know as long as you hard working and you're determined then you can get there everybody needs a tiny little bit of luck which is either in terms of being spotted by a scout or something like that, or a coach, you know, that gives them a bit of extra. But um, that's like in every facet of life where you need that little bit of luck. But if you are, if you are prepared and you train yourself and and you work at it, then you certainly can make it. And it's not not quite as big a step as you as you think. Um, I look at myself as a player, and I I played I played up to state to county level up to under nineteen. And then didn't quite kick on and i wish i'd known then what i know now that i wasn't quite as far away as i was because i think i lost a little bit of um you know confidence thinking i was further away than i was and then i look at contemporary players who made it all the way to the top and i think wow i, I was you know I, I wasn't worse than them um you know they were probably just had that determination or that support network or whatever it was that got them over the hill, whereas I sort of got there and I just couldn't quite get over it. So I use a lot of that in in my coaching to get kids to understand that actually you're not that far away, um, you know. Um, so yeah, it's very important that the parents understand that too. Um, I know we all want the absolute best for our kids. We all want them to, you know, if you're playing whatever sport to play for the national team. Sometimes that's not what the kid wants either. You know, he just wants to play and have fun. And and so it's important that as a coach, you understand that as important your parent, you understand that, that you can, you know, they still want to go to these academies and be the best they can be. But for them, the best they can be is just playing at academy or club level with their friends, um, you know, and then you do have the, the players who want to go to the very top and you have to drive that. And you have to understand that process because, you know, sometimes you can, as a coach and a parent, you can be a little bit too pushy. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's kids are kids, especially teenage kids. They, they need a lot of love and support. I mean, I know outwardly they're confident and brash and all that, but inwardly a lot of them, especially when they try to make it in sports, they're very insecure. Um, and so it's important that we understand that and, and help them through that process. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The one thing that is lacking here in this, um, Washington DC area is that the coaches um, the parents expectation is that the coaches should come the head coach whoever the academy owner or coach to come to the ground to come and understand the situations and uh, give them an approach give them a tactics that is missing you know then only you can develop a player right by looking at the stats and also scoreboard you can't determine what exactly happened in the ground right so what would be your approach and what would be your uh, style of working with the uh, teams like let's take u13 uh, you know that or u15 or u11 what would be your style of working you know the way you approach the leagues or you know internal tournaments locally hey chandra so when it comes to match day that is the player's moment not mine right i do my work before the match and then let them go and enjoy the game. I will observe the game. I don't get too involved. I'm there if someone wants, you know, to come and ask me a question, but I don't interfere because you do your work beforehand, trust that you've planned and you've prepared those players, and then let them go and enjoy the game. And when the game's finished, 
you can then do your work from there. So I let the players play and make their mistakes because they should learn from their own mistakes. And after the game and in the training, not, not immediately after the game because everyone's too emotional, but in the next training sessions, we'll then run through where we, we made whatever errors we made or whatever we did well because it's important to reinforce the things they've done well as well. I think a lot of the times people are just looking for mistakes um, and then they don't credit the good things people have done. So I, I really, for match days, is for players to go out and express themselves and enjoy themselves without the pressure of thinking, oh, no, the coach is watching me. I don't want to make a mistake because that's when they do make mistakes. So I'm a very relaxed coach on match day. I'm very chilled. If the team is, you know, 20 for nine, I will have the same expression as if we're 200 for one because that mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when you when the coach is showing you know, anger or whatever displeasure that translates to the team and they make more mistakes. So a match day is for their, is their moment. It's not our moment. Um, that's my view anyway. Some coaches are very, very different, but I think to manage parents' expectations, if you think I'm going to be standing on the side of the field shouting and, 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 you know, sort of manipulating fielders around and doing things, then, um, then you're very much mistaken. I'm very relaxed. I'll be on the side having a coffee with you, talking about the game and enjoying the moment. And, and you know, and while I'm doing that, I will be observing as much as I can. We've got the scorers to do that. And then we can go through that during the week. And that's when we do our hard work. And yeah, Saturdays or Sundays or whenever matches are, is really just to, to, to watch them, the, the players have their moment. Sure. One final question from me. Since you are in India, traveling to all the World Cup games with Netherlands team uh, as a liaison, and um, you have observed uh, how the games are happening. You know, some upsets happened. Some teams are really, really prospering, like unbeaten, like New Zealand, India. Why these two teams are really dominant and doing so well, and why? other test playing nations are not so confident and that momentum is missing what is your understanding i think chandra i think india india at home with the players they've got is is unbelievable um it's gonna be very difficult to beat them because they have all their bases covered i think depending on how serious hardik's injury is that could maybe shake things up a little bit for them because he's a very important player to balance their team um, but, I, I, you know, it's beating India in India is always one of the toughest challenges. I think New Zealand, I just work with them in the UK now. They're a very organized team. They, their coach is a very smart guy. Um, and they, they make sure that uh, they make the most of all the talent they have. Plus, they've got a phenomenal bowling attack. Um, and Kane Williamson, even if he doesn't play, his presence is very calming and stuff. So those two teams stand out for those reasons. South Africa just had a blip. Um, if you look at the quality of their team, it was just one of those things where, you know, and, and probably a good thing for them to just get a loss out of the way. Um, I think uh, Chloe and Danny will like the fact that Australia are in strife. Um, I think Australia are the one big team that probably with their plans and things are maybe a little bit messy because um, they dropped the wiki keeper and you know they so they they form their big players are not really in form and then it looks like they're a bit confused about what their best team is um and then of the other teams sri lanka just struggling because all their best bowlers are injured um they've called up angela matthews um now so that's probably good for them um but yeah it's a very open world cup aside from i would say india who are standout favorites and then below that anyone can beat anyone england England are too good not to to find their form. Um, and it's just one of those things. I think it's going to be very interesting. You could probably put India into the semi-finals already um, and more than likely New Zealand. But then the other two spots are going to be very close um, and could down, down to net run rate or whatever. But what I will say is whoever can adapt to the conditions best is 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 going to be gonna be right up there because the different grounds are so I mean the grounds are so different. We I'm in lockdown now and the stadium is beautiful, out feels fantastic. Everything's really good. And we just come from Durham Shala where you know you or you've heard about all the things with the with the outfield and things. So for the players to just make that ad adaptation and then the different wickets that you're getting and Durham Shala, beautiful fresh air, everyone's happy. Um you know and then you go to Delhi where you almost have to wear a mask and, and get used to that. The, you know the air pollution there so yeah it's, it's fascinating I, it's my first time in india and i'm absolutely loving it and learning so much 
that I can put back into coaching and understanding. And you see the passion of, of the people here for cricket. It's unbelievable. I mean, even the Netherlands side, there's people lining the streets when we're driving and stuff. So, yeah, like I said, this is definitely a home of cricket at the moment. And one of the parents asked, like, what is your specialization? Because Rahul is uh, from Delhi. He's coming on November 3rd. And he's a batting specialist and batting coach primarily. But he can teach bowling also. But what is your specialization as a head coach? Um, Chandra, I haven't, I haven't defined myself as a specialist batting feeling or bowling coach, whatever. I think what I, what I do really well in my coaching is the ability to bring out the best in players. So the mental side of the game, if you're going to say what is what is Riaz really good at, it's getting people to understand the game, getting them to, you know, building confidence in players. Um, there's a player in South Africa um, called Farhan Bahadi, and he played for South Africa at a couple of World Cups. And if, if you speak to him, he'll say that at a young age, it was the confidence I showed in him to, you know, that he could reach a high level that made a big difference to him. So but there's batting skills, there's bowling skills, there's fielding, which I'm very confident that I'm good at, can help kids at all levels. And even, I mean, working with the Dutch side now, I have players come to me for assistance with, with you know, all their skills, different guys come to me. Um, but I think a big strength is being able to put things in place where, where people can thrive. So, you know, trusting the coaches that work with me to do their job and then assisting them from there. Um, I think if you pigeonhole yourself as a coach, then you're really struggling. If we say that, you know, we've got a batting coach specifically, then the trust in him as a bowling coach suddenly, you know, plunges. You know, even though he might be still very good at bowling, at, at assisting the bowlers. Um, if you say to a parent, oh, I'm primarily a fielding coach, well, you know, the, well, who needs a fielding coach? Because my son bats and he bowls. Yeah, but he spends mm -hmm. 50 overs in the field. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah. So I, I try not to pigeonhole myself like that. I think I'm a, I'm a big cricket fan. And, and the biggest side of the game is the mental side, is, is getting people to understand that how much hard work they've got to put in, how much you know, they need to do from their side, how much the parent support is, is there and things. So, yeah, I, I, I make sure that. But my first love, if I'm truly honest, is fielding. I enjoy it, really enjoy it. And I enjoy running fielding drills and things because I think it's such an underrated part of the game um and people don't realize that like you can score 100 and you still got to go and feel for all those overs and you know when you're bowling you still feel off your own bowling and then you got to feel while other guys bowling so it's the thing you do the most um and people tend to practice right. the least of the three you know of the three skills mm -hmm. even i wanted to introduce that uh, best fielder award every game like how india is doing because that motivates everybody to step up their fielding abilities and you know give the best yeah yeah agreed you, you can make such a difference in your fielding um you know some bo a bowler bowls a bad ball and you do a, a great stop for them and save those runs he feels better when he bowls the next ball um right. you know and uh, and if you have a bad day with a bat you've still got to feel those 20 overs or 50 overs or in a test match all those days and if you don't enjoy it then <laughs> And it's a real struggle. Um, so, yeah, I mean, working with the India team and seeing how Virat has driven the fielding side of things where in the training sessions they compete with each other and, and they've got a real love for it, whereas before it's like a lot of people are sort of, oh, just, I'd rather bat for a bit longer, I'd rather bowl for a bit longer. And now it's like, yeah, come on, let's get let's get this fielding drills going and, and see if I can beat you. And then that drives each other. So it's really good. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? So one question uh, to Riaz. Uh, you did mention that on the game day, you let the kids play, enjoy the game. And you did mention that you do not want to be uh, guide them or control them on that day so that they'll be extra cautious and they may not be able to perform the way they wanted. I get that point. But at least like uh, on the game day, will you be around? Meaning like, uh, will you just watch the game rather uh, guiding them yeah there'll definitely be guidance but there won't be i won't be a puppet master you know so i won't i won't interfere with field placings and things like that i'm there f when they need my help if something is going drastically wrong of course you step in but essentially I, i'm trying to say that i won't be there and sort of captaining from the side of the field um you know i've seen coaches who do that and players learn nothing 
Um, right. You no. Know? Right. So I will. I will be there. I will be there. And if people, you know, if the kids uh, look at a very young age, you do do a bit of puppet mastery <laughs> because they don't know what they're doing. But I'm talking about we're talking if we're talking about sort of right. the high performance side of things, then um, those players need to learn on the job. Um, and I'm there. I'm standing on the side if you want advice, and we'll yeah. pass on advice about pitch conditions, what we notice in the opposition, etc. But essentially, what I'm saying is the player has to work some things out for themselves. Um, because you bat on your own, you know, you, I can't hold your hand while you're batting right. and you run up to bowl on your own. But the, in terms of developing game plans on the day or try to help them understand what the pitch is doing or, you know, any of that, yeah, of course we, we will pass on that information. It's just more a case of, uh, you know, I'm not going to stand there and, and, and um, tell you what you, exactly we should do. You, you've got to work those out for yourselves because then I learn about you as a player as well. I can learn about a player who right. can adapt. I can learn about a player who maybe shows a little fear because it's a fast bowler and those sort of things. Um, so you learn a lot more when you when you give people, you know, responsibility. Okay. So you watch the game, but you will not interfere in the game. I will, yeah, I, up to a point. Up to a point. Like I say, if we're talking about you know, just developing young players, then yes, you. I, I will encourage all the coaches to to help. Um, but if, in terms of the sort of high performance level, when you're trying to, a player is trying to, you know, achieve and, and reach play international cricket or whatever, then they really do have to have to learn for themselves. Um, you know, if I say you got a bat like this, um, and that might not work for them because of the type of person they are or the type of player they are, then you know, if they're just playing my way, then that's not going to work for them. Long term, you have to figure out your own game. Um, and as a coach, you then facilitate how that game works. So if, if I give you an example of Joe and Billy Root, I can tell you, I can tell you that Billy is much more talented than Joe, right? For the, uh, Billy's got much more natural talent than Joe, and he's not achieved as much as Joe because Joe is much more focused and dedicated to the game. Um, and, and Billy won't, won't be upset that I've said that. He, he agrees with me. Um, Joe was always more focused. If we had nets, Joe would, he never wanted to get out. Whereas Billy would get bored after five minutes and try to hit you over extra cover and then try to reverse sweep you and do all that. And he could do that, but those are risks, right? And then he'd get out and be upset about it. And so that player then has to figure out how they're going to do it and how they're going to be successful with the way they want to play because they got to enjoy the game. Billy Root is doing perfectly fine now at Glamorgan and having a good season because he's figured out that a way to play that suits him as a person you know, he was never going to be able to do what Joe's doing because that's just not his personality. So I think that's a big part of coaching is to understand the player, what they want and how they want to do it and how you can help them. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering, like, you will watch the game for sure. That's all I, I just wanted to uh, confirm. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And it's that um, feedback cycle that you were talking about earlier, every year. So you watch the game on a weekend, but then the following week, when you're back, in, when they're all back in training, you'll then address like the positives and negatives, like what you saw in the game situation as well. Yeah, yeah, correct. We, I think, I mean, what I've learned at international cricket is there's different ways of going about things. I, um, I give you an example of India under Ravi Shastri. There were no team talks after a game. Um, you know, he did this separately and individually. The team bus would be ready and we left the ground 10 minutes after the last ball was bowled. Then Raul Dravid is very different. There's always a team talk. So the test match in Edgbaston, you'd have a team talk at the end of every day. Now, different things work for different players. I think the key thing is understanding the group you have or the individual you have and what he wants to do. So someone who's not had a good day, with a bat, for example, he might want you to put arm around his shoulder and say, look, don't worry about it. It's all going to be fine. And another guy wants to be left alone because he just wants to deal with it on his own. You know, I've seen people throw bats. I've seen people break TVs. And I've seen people come calmly in and smile and, you know, have a cup of tea and, and just get on with it. So there's very different ways. And that's why I say it's very important as a parent and as the coach to understand the player. All right, that, that, that I couldn't want every player I coach to play international cricket because then I can bask in the reflected glory of that and say I'm a wonderful coach, and I can be a parent and say, "Oh, my kid's the best in the world because you know he plays for India or England or South Africa, or whatever it is." But at the end of the day, that player has to want it for themselves. You can drive as much as you want, and I understand different cultures. I've worked in South Africa, I've worked with the India team, I've worked in the UK. They're so very, very different. 
um, in how you approach things. In South Africa, if I told someone to run up a hill 50 times, they just do it. When I go to England, they ask me why, why they should do it and they don't want to do it. Um, so I got to get them to do it in a different way. You know, I learned that very early when I moved to the UK. If I think if I did it in India, they would also just do it. Um, so there's very different ways of doing it. But I think, I think a big part of my job, um, especially in new areas, is getting people to understand my philosophy and where I come from and, and how that's going to help, help their kid or help them themselves. Um, and I know that's it's difficult for some parents because they want you to, you know, to sort of hold their player's hand and, and, and do that. But I think I think I'll get them to understand that there's there's different ways and better ways to to getting success. Mm -hmm.